Welcome to the Battle of Bull Run on Brigadier General Difficulty. Um, before you go into every major battle, you have to buy out the, sc the stores. Cause, uh, and I just saw this on Reddit. Not everybody understands that the stores reset after every grand battle. Very important then to buy whatever you want because uh, anything in inventory is lost and it's, you only get one chance to buy it. And then uh, the stores are reset. So yeah, before every grand battle, you'll notice I buy all the stuff that I want. I have um, almost $800,000, and I've just bought a ton of stuff. And at the end of this, you get 7,500 to 1855s plus whatever you capture. So, I mean, and I'm going to buy those 8,000 Harper's Ferries too. So yeah, at the end of this, I'll have a ridiculous number of weapons. I'll have like 20,000 um, 55s and 10,000 Harper's Ferries in my inventory. So, yeah, I, I'm really happy with this army. I don't intend to build a huge army. Um, two full cores, and uh, I, I cut out all the building part. The first core, the first two divisions are going to do a lot of fighting. They're at 1250. Those are my best units. You'll notice the 24-pound howitzers, 20 parrots, uh, JF Browns, in this unit, the 3rd Division is just kind of a holding division with some artillery and another group of sharps to get experience. And I'm going to use snipers, cav, infantry, artillery in about equal measure. So, yeah, I, I have, I'm not going to build a big infantry army. Um, I'm going to keep building out these great artillery units as guns become available. And um, there's a... 600 man melee cav. Now, melee cav does not get a debuff for being oversized, so you can make those 750 if you want. I have it at 600 because that just works. Um, yeah, so here we have some, infant, uh, some inventory, and that's great. During the battle, if you take any losses, you can replace men if you have weapons in inventory already purchased. You can't buy anything new. Uh, economy is at 10, so I can sell stuff, and I did. I also bought a lot of stuff, as you can see, so I'm down to $455,000. And yeah, it's all good. I'm That's a lot of money, and my army is pretty much built, and I have a ton of inventory, um, more than I probably need right now. And uh, yeah, I bought all the officers, as I usually do, so... The first phase of this, I haven't figured out a way to fight this first phase in a way that I'm happy with it. So what I do is I just park my units in the woods and let the phase end. Um, and if I can't get like a really high kill ratio in the, and I haven't figured out how to do it, um, so I've stopped worrying about it altogether. Um, this is how you skip it. You just hide in the woods and uh, the timer counts down and you're done. So, yeah, go to the next phase. If the game says we're even, I assume he's going to get reinforcements. Okay, great. Um, I always take number of brigades he has and divide it into the total number of troops. It gives me an idea of the size of his individual units. Um, I'm taking a look at his units, and they're all less than 1,000, so that's great. Um, I like fighting his units when they're more of them but smaller because they're more fragile. I don't really like fighting his units when they're oversized. I understand when they're oversized, they get a debuff to efficiency, but I just don't... I mean, it's just tedious to fire volley after volley after volley into these units. Um, yeah, I want to hit this guy, and I want him to break. That's a three-star. looks like a... Is it two or three stars? Kind of hard to see on my video. But the uh, good news is he got blasted, and now he's down to a tiny number. And his unit is now really fragile. And I'm just going to hit him over and over again and keep chipping away at him. Yeah, this is great. Make sure my JF Browns get lots of shots. He's not going to be too far from his third star, which is really valuable. So it has come to my attention that, uh, talking to Panda Kraut, that the perks don't either don't do what they say they do, or they do something else, or they do some combination. I have to really think about this. Um, I recommend going to Reddit and getting more details. So unit perks and commander perks and 
uh, the perks we give to units. Um, well, well, they don't do what they say they do. Like, like for example, artillery. Um, it, it, if you choose the perk that gives you cover, it does give you cover. But it also says that the uh, batteries turn 50% faster. Well, they don't. So that might be important to know if that's important to you. So anyway, I recommend going and I have to think about it. Um, rethink all these perks, the ones I play. Because um, I'm going pretty much by what the description says. And um, yeah, if, if the perks don't work the way they're supposed to, then that changes it. So anyway, I'm going with what I know at, at this point. And um, anyway, the, the point is that uh, skirmisher units or snipers are supposed to give you great visibility, if that's true, and I think it is, but I'm not sure. Um, if you take the uh, spotting ability, you get 20% better spotting or something. Um, that allows you to see enemy units better, particularly artillery, so your long-range guns can start to pick the enemy artillery apart. And in this battle, you'll see that my long-range cannons really perform well and really take his artillery apart. And I'm going to get nothing but more and more batteries of these long-range guns for that purpose. So in these grand battles, his artillery is going to get just hammered. And, yeah. The absolute killer of enemy artillery and enemy officers is the 20-pound parrot. It does the most damage at very long range, and it just tears enemy artillery to pieces at the maximum range. Uh, so that is the number one thing to invest in. And then you get a bunch of these batteries with really, really good killing power in the end game. And it doesn't matter what the enemy brings to the battlefield, you're just going to slaughter it. So that, I think, is the big advantage of the North, is the very, very powerful artillery. And, uh, well, I mean, you get so much good gear. I mean, you get great weapons as the North, and you get a lot of it. So, you know, that if you make use of that, you're going to have a really good time. So, um, you'll see it here. You'll see the 20-pound parrots, the James, and the Whitworth just tear his artillery to pieces. And the Whitworth does half the damage, maybe, of the 20-pound parrot when they're both at three stars. Um, but the Whitworth, and you'll see it in this battle, just has such great range. It, you can just park it anywhere, and it just, if you can see it, you can hit it. And, yeah, the, the Whitworth just picks away at enemy artillery units until they're killed. And, you know, it's just kind of uh, target an enemy battery and then kind of pay attention to when the enemy battery has been destroyed so you can target another battery. That's pretty much it. And it doesn't matter where the enemy parks or tries to hide or get away. The range on the Whitworth is just insane. So anyway, all I'm doing here is uh, the, the initial units come in, and I've taken this nice defensive position and taking shots on him. And um, yeah, it's it's all good. Uh, the game is going to say that I get uh, 20 to 1, uh, or 19 to 1. It's not exactly true if you uh, replace some losses during the camp phase, which I do, um, those are taken away from your losses. So, but it's a ridiculous number. It's 19 to one or 18 to one or whatever it is. So all I'm trying to do is get my initial troops in and they, you know, get 10 to one or better in kills, um, degrade the enemy, secure this part of the railroad track so that when my reinforcements come in, they can take that little clump of woods to the left. So that's that's kind of what I want. So this guy has already been driven off. On Major General, it's probably a little harder to get rid of that guy. But I don't want him there when my reinforcements come in. So um, that a guy, if you have a unit in that position and you walk up to it with your units across that open ground, they're, they're going to take casualties. So... He's been driven off, and now my reinforcements, when they come in, they can just 
stroll over there and occupy those woods. So I'm turning off my 24 pound howitzers if there's nobody in uh, close range to take shots at. I don't certainly don't want to fire the 24 pound howitzer at long range. That's just real expensive. The 24 pound howitzer costs a lot more uh, to fire than any other artillery. And if it's not doing any damage, you're just, you know, it's just cash that you're hemorrhaging. Um, yeah, so every shot you fire costs you money. So I don't want to spend money if I'm not getting anything for it. And firing any of the smoothboard cannon at long range is just going to give you nothing. So at this point, I'm going to let this guy just walk in. But then I see his commander. That's perfect. If I can take shots on his commander, take shots on this guy coming across this open ground, it's all good. Would love to kill Jackson. I think these guys have... Uh, the commanders start with an escort that's fairly large, so it takes a while to kill them. But uh, when you finally do take them out, it's devastating to the enemy army. So, yeah, I'll just keep picking away. Um, the key to this game is patience. Keep chipping away at the enemy and degrading him and upgrading your position all the time. I'm paying attention to my sniper and wondering why he keeps going into uh, enemy visibility and out of visibility. So I want him to stay hidden and take free shots. I don't really want him to uh, be exposed. And I don't want to move this guy because this guy's taking shots. Um, but he's also hidden. So if my guys can stay hidden and keep taking free shots, that's that's all great. And I certainly don't want my sniper to get out of a hidden position. So I wanted his unit that advanced to the north to get into a canister range before I opened up. Probably opened up just a little early. But uh, my infantry in the uh, has great cover. Notice he has like very, very high cover. And uh, yeah, now that guy's in canister range. And I have two artillery firing on him. Uh, my infantry unit's in great cover. Two detached skirmishers, two artillery... Yeah, it's just... That was pretty hopeless. So, just ganged up on him. The other guys are taking that other... You know, if that guy stays in there long enough, he'll just shatter. Yeah, I'm keeping a, uh, just keeping touch on how many casualties I'm taking, and I see that I'm taking, like, none. So, yep, this is all good. Patiently wait out the clock as this thing counts down, and when my reinforcements come in, which will happen very soon, um, yeah, then, then we can move forward to the next phase of the battle. And we get through the... These are my best troops, so I don't want them to take any losses. I just want them to inflict damage on the enemy. That guy is absolutely persistent. Yeah, 
and he's gone. So, yeah, one destroyed unit. That's one less unit to worry about. And that was fairly easy. So I don't want my artillery to waste ammo at this point. Just going to quietly wait and count down. And okay, the reinforcements come in. Nothing exciting happens. My first group of reinforcements are able to take the woods. The second group, I move everybody up and wait, get everybody kind of together. And then they move forward as one group into the woods to the left that you saw there, which is now off the screen. Um, his cab is giving me a nice target to shoot at, so I'm happy to, you know, do damage to his cab. His cab in this battle can be a real uh, nuisance. I want my infantry to secure these woods, and I need my artillery to get up as fast as possible. Interesting thing about the artillery, the artillery does more damage. It's like 30% more if it's not in the woods, so... I certainly want my long-range guns to not be in the woods. I know I've mentioned this before. Um, the smoothbore, like 24-pound howitzer, um, that unit needs to be in the woods because it's going to be right on the front line, and I need the cover for that unit. And you get two stars, and you get additional cover for the unit, and that reduces your casualties. But I'm always going to take pass-through damage because my 24-pound howitzers are always going to be on the front line. The um, canister is how you get your insane number of kills. Like uh, You can get three or 4,000 kills with a battery of 24-pound howitzers in some of these battles, and you only do that if you're firing canister right into the face of the enemy the entire time. And probably you only get that on Major General because the enemy is more aggressive, um, they're going to be in your face more, and they'll stand there and take a couple volleys before they're, they'll route. So, yeah. So there's my Whitworth firing halfway across the map at uh, some enemy artillery in the woods. And we can just sit there and kill him, given, you know, any measure of time. So, yeah. Six-pound rifle, the Waird, is perfect for this task. But it, its range is a lot shorter than the 20-pound Parrot. The 20-pound Parrot, of course, is also great for this task. So if I can sit here and just... And that guy, you know, he's probably a 12H or a Napoleon, which is completely useless at this range. So, yeah, it just, my guys will kill him easily, and he won't do very much to me. So I, I'd like to get my six, where, um, that's a six rifle, um, backed up a little bit. See, now he's out of visibility. That's great. Um, now that he's not visible, I can fire and hopefully won't take any counter battery fire. The artillery will always target whatever it sees that is closest to you or closest to him. So in this case, um, he has something that he can see and it's closer than the six pounder. And so the six pound rifle will, will get free shots. Yeah, it doesn't look like much, but um, that's a pretty small unit, and it's not going to take a whole lot of shots to wipe out that art, that uh, artillery unit. It's going to be gone. So I'm looking at this, and I'm thinking, you know, there's there's more enemy artillery on my left, so maybe one of these 20-pound parrots needs to go over and do something uh, constructive, and I'm going to move a 20-pound parrot uh, over there, too. And that's what I want to do with my long-range guns, is when my infantry attacks, his artillery's already been wiped out, so I'm not going to take canister. So that's that's how I want every battle to go. Well, grand battle. Sometimes you, the side battles don't last long enough to be able to do that, but every grand battle, you can pretty much wipe out the entire enemy artillery force before you advance your infantry. You have... I'm trying to think, is there any battle where you don't have plenty of time? I can't think of any. But it depends on how many long-range guns you have. Fire, 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 fire. 
So the 10 Ord is not horrible at long-range shots. I mean, it's not completely worthless. It has some accuracy at range, uh, but it's better firing at, uh, at, like, the skirmishers that are right in front of this infantry. So, yeah. And I really hate enemy skirmishers. They drive me nuts. So I'm going to get some of my snipers over here. There are going to be some opportunities. Anytime I see enemy skirmishers, I detach skirmishers of my own from my infantry units. Um, yeah, and I hit them with artillery. So yeah, this is very much a rock, paper, scissors game. And notice my artillery is just picking his artillery apart. It'll be, that unit will be dead soon. Now there are another couple more units up there I can't see. And eventually I'm going to want to get Cav up behind his army. Not necessarily to take shots on his artillery, but just to be able to see where his artillery is so my artillery can kill it. Unfortunately, he's in the woods, so it takes a little longer to kill him. If he were in the open, this would be a lot easier. So what's happening is that his army is coming in from the left and is going to attack, should attack, this um, defensive line that I've put up. Uh, I have Cav sort of to the rear to, if, in case he tries to come behind my line with anything. I can see it. You can see it on the strategic map in the right-hand corner a lot easier. Um, this, is, this is very brave of this unit that's charging in right now. Make sure that guy is getting hit with canister and... I hit pause just to make sure everybody's firing on this guy and nobody's blocked. Um, put everybody on run so they turn and fire faster. Move up some infantry and in support just in case. Make sure all the artillery is targeting this guy. Want to hit him really hard and, and knock him back. Yep, that, that worked out perfectly. Hopefully get some canister shots on this guy. Yep, that just took a little momentary pause to make sure that we just hammered that guy as, you know, got, we milked it for all we could and got just as, as many kills with every unit as I could squeeze out of it. So, okay, I'll let the JF Brown come up and hit, uh, hit some of his units in the flank and rear as he's marching across the front of my army. His artillery unit I've been targeting is about to die, so. And his infantry is just a little too close to snipers and uh, exploding shells. So I check every once in a while to see how many men I'm losing, and the number is pretty much none. And his artillery is gone, so I don't know how many uh, artillery batteries I've wiped out now. Maybe it's one, maybe that's been a couple, I just didn't pay attention. Um, that every time I, you know, the goal is to find him and then kill them. So all I need to do is see his artillery. And eventually his infantry is going to, going to, pretty much has to, uh, try to move forward and fight. So... Yeah, this always happens. There's always a push right here at this point. Um, not a surprise. All the times I've fought this, pretty much there's always a push right here. He gets his reinforcements in, then he charges here. Usually he charges with a lot of units. Uh, in this case, yeah, he doesn't have a chance. So even the six-pound rifle is going to get some good kills at this range. So that's good. Free XP. My little... Uh, units that are only 500 are going to get some free XP. They have 55, 55s, and so they're not going to do too badly.
Okay, I had uh, dismounted Cav on the front line to get... Uh, if he attacked straight into that defensive position, my Cav would have gotten some free shots and then fallen back. That's great. Uh, didn't happen. I don't think I got any kills with him. But uh, now I want them to go on a uh, on a ride around the flank of the enemy and see what we can see. Hopefully we'll see some artillery and we'll see some we'll snag some supply wagons, kill some uh, detached or skirmisher units. Um, just want to see what's over there. But mainly I need to get some eyes on hopefully some enemy artillery and uh, kill it. So this guy's making a mistake of crossing the water right in front of my JF Browns. So that didn't work out very well. And right behind that, some nice artillery. I can get some nice kills. So he's probably going to die. Yeah, he's in the water. Zero cover. Man, his numbers are really down to about nothing already. So, yeah. That's the difference between hiding in the woods and hiding in the middle of a river. Don't hide in the middle of a river. You're going to die. So. And I think he's gone. So that was quick. And there's another target for my JF Browns. JF Brown is just racking up kills, which is what the JF Brown does. The JF Brown should get a thousand free kills every battle. Um, over a thousand kills in a battle like this easily. So they take a little bit of micromanagement. Um, when, when you have a lot of units, it, it's not worth it. They're just kind of a nuisance to micromanage. But when I have this many and I'm pretty much playing a set piece battle, most units aren't moving very much then, yeah, then I don't mind. And they're really, really valuable. They just keep chipping away at the enemy and just rack up a pile of kills for... And they don't take any losses. Um, enemy artillery might get a shot on them or something, but if they stay out of range... I mean, their range is so huge, they can just sit back and just keep piling up kills. Okay, I'm just patiently waiting. It's 18.30 hours, which is 6.30 p.m. Uh, the day probably ends at 2100. I'm going to go up and take the observation point and uh, just make sure where his army is. My units are all hidden in the woods right now, and I'd like to make a dash for those supply wagons. I know that he's going to have troops like I can see it now, but I knew he had somebody up in those fortifications. Um, that, that's guaranteed. There's somebody in those fortif fortified positions. Uh, there's a commander up there. I can easily get the one in the south. Hopefully before, the, you know, it's going to... It looks like it's halfway in the water. Uh, that's great. Um, getting the second one is going to be tough because if he retreats north, he could pull one of my infantry units into the range of those guys in the forts because they have greater range when they're in that fortified position. So I'm kind of thinking, who do I want to take the shot? If I have a green melee unit, I, I can afford that because that's going to cost me nothing if I take some uh, losses. My two-star um, rifled cab, I don't want them to take uh, any losses. They're expensive. And I just found another artillery unit. So I captured both of those, got the heck out of there. That's great. And it looks like we got uh, we got him all excited. The AI has calculated he needs to attack. 
And I completely agree. I think he needs to attack. So, yeah, get in there. He needs to attack right into canister fire. Okay, some exploding shells. And slowly he turns while my infantry tears him apart. And my artillery gets free kills. Thank you very much for coming forward. That was great fun. Here's a little something to take with you on your way back to where you started. So, yeah, I'd like for him to uh, do that 20 or 30 more times. So my Whitworth, I really should move the Whitworth, I suppose, but uh, I can just give him one of the captured supply wagons, and he can fire all day. So I'm taking a look at this. He's down to 18,000 men from wherever he started. So that's not nothing. I mean, 18,000 men is still a fighting force. If I go charging uh, into those fortified positions, I could lose half my army. Even as uh, under strength as the enemy is right now and as terrible as this infantry is. Um, in those fortified positions backed up by the artillery he has, um, I could lose half my army and it would just be very costly. So I don't want to do that. I can send an infantry force around his right flank. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to send some cav around and see how much damage I can do to him. I have plenty of time. Um, if nothing else, get eyes on his artillery so that my, my guns can start picking him apart. Uh, my Whitworth needs something fun to do, so that'll be fine. And I find two of his skirmisher units here. So, yeah, we're going to see if we can't kill these guys. Cav, running down his skirmisher units should be fairly easy. Yeah, his skirmisher units are in the woods, so the guy is fighting a little harder than he normally is. I'm hoping he retreats out into the open because then it's going to be over very fast. So yeah, I hear uh, his infantry unit uh, sprinting on roller skates toward my unit. I'm hoping to get out of there before I take a volley, but man, his unit, his infantry is faster than my cav, which is insane. So he gets a shot off, which is nuts. Now I have three units picking on his skirmisher unit. So that's academic. Okay, he's finally launching a real attack. Need to fall back with the JF Browns. Don't want those guys to get caught. Consolidate my cav. Get my units in a good defensive position. Get the artillery started. Target these guys who are in the open charging. Um, between phases, they completely um, reset with a charge bonus, so they have that speed and that aggression at the beginning every time there's a phase reset. So that's what we're seeing right now. We're seeing these guys started with a um, this charge bonus thing that they have. And they only lose that after you've inflicted some losses on them. So my unit there took some... Oh, that was just a skirmisher unit, detached skirmisher. Okay. Let's let this guy uh, run forward and take some, um, take some damage from my concentrated fire that I have amassed for him for just this purpose. One of the reasons I'm on this side of the railroad track is... Um, um, he keeps trying to occupy those, and they're a death trap. So um, he's spread out over a big area. My units can all, um, I'll have like three, four, or five, or six units that can fire into one enemy unit. And yeah, it's just, 
it, it, it's a slaughter. So particularly on Brigadier General when his units are pretty fragile anyway. Yeah, that didn't take very long. Yeah, and his charge bonus is now gone. So he won't be quite as aggressive in his future attacks. And all these units are getting much smaller and much more fragile. So, yep, it's all going well. So my cav is doing um, fairly well. I would really like to get back up around his flank, but I think this is probably going to be over fairly soon. Yeah, it's 1945. Not sure how much... I mean, this is perfect. I'm really glad he's attacking. And, uh... Yeah, I want to go up and see what he has in those woods. My Whitworth just um, is looking for artillery to kill, and I don't see any. So yeah, my skirmisher unit can sit at range and pick these guys apart. He's just standing in the middle of the field. I mean, this is just devastating for him. I need these everybody to get up and take a shot on these guys um we we can pretty much wipe him out here yeah all those units are just getting absolutely hammered and i need to see what does he have in those woods Yeah, I should have everybody on run, and everybody's just going up and getting, like, lots of shots. And I don't see anything in fortifications. I can get into those woods and start to tear his artillery apart if I get... Now, he still has a lot of guys. He still has 14,000. But if they're all over on the right side of the map, then... Oh, yeah, and this guy who just routed... Yeah, we can run him down and kill him. He's very small, and it, about two cav units should get him. His uh, artillery is dead. He's in the open. Yeah, he's not going to survive very long. His infantry unit is probably going to face toward the cav, and my infantry is going to hit him in the flank and rear. So, yeah, he's already... And he's tiny anyway. So, yeah, I'm just looking at the clock thinking, come on, give me a little bit more time. Because it's not going to take much time to kill this guy. Yeah, I'm thinking, um... Yeah, if that, that infantry is dead... Uh, keep my infantry in the woods. He's got a bunch of uh, artillery behind that infantry to the north. But uh, my cav should be able to run down that. Anytime there's an isolated unit, you should be able to run it down and kill it. I just didn't have time. So, yeah. Okay, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make sure that all my artillery is topped off. I don't want to make any units bigger, just top them off. Giving these units perks, I, they don't take effect, I'm pretty sure. Um, I just do it, but I, they, I don't think they take effect. But anyway, I'm topping off the artillery. And, yeah, add a couple men to get these guys back to 500. They're doing great. 
Um, if I lost a gun, I wouldn't replace the gun. I just top off the artillery so there's a um, even number of men. So every gun is 25 men. If I lose 10 men, it'll tell you like there there was a loss. There's two men. That so okay. So I just top them up. So it's number of guns times 25. Um, yeah, because as soon as you lose 25 men, you lose a gun. If I lose 24 men in this battle and then top the unit off, I can lose 24 men in the, the next phase and still not lose a gun. But if I don't, then I lose 24 in the next phase, I'll lose a gun. So, yeah. Yep, everything's going. Looks great. Didn't take hardly any losses. Um, I'm happy with the units being 1,000 in size. That's terrific. Um, I want to get lots of experience for my cav, for my snipers. That guy hasn't come in yet, so that's too bad. So my best units, I might push them up to uh, 1,200, just because that one guy kind of looked like he needed a couple more men. Yeah, I'm really happy with this army. Those Jameses are going to do good. Uh, they're great guns. The uh, 10 Ords are just there to get XP for the unit, and they'll get replaced with better guns, which is just about everything else. Um, the, his number didn't go up, so I can add a few more men. There, there's not much I want to add. Um, th these guys that are 500 for this next phase, I don't want them to lose experience, so it's going to cost me less than $1,000. Um, how much is this? Yeah, like $866. Okay. to Because uh, I don't want them to lose XP. I want them to get their first star, but I want them to be up to 600 men. So, yeah, it looks good. Numbers are good. So take all these guys, add a few men. I, d I don't want to add a bunch of people. Um because I have side battles coming up, and th this is not going to help me in the side battles. Uh, 1,100 is fine. I'm just kind of making them even. Yeah, they add five. J just make them even numbers. And um, this guy lost some, but not a big deal. Add a few. Yeah, that's pretty much. Just top them off. Make it an even number. Completely unnecessary. He didn't have to do that. Yeah, he's fine. He's fine. He's fine. He's fine. Yeah, that guy hasn't done anything. Um, let's see. I think that's it. So yeah, numbers are about even, which means I'm going to win. But I think he's going to get reinforcements again. So you have a couple of flags you have to hold. Uh, he always attacks the my right flank, um, and then I'm just going to put... I don't have many units. I, if I had to do this again, uh, what I would want is smaller units, but more of them. So my army's kind of spread out to defend these um, two victory locations. So, yeah, I'm, I'm going to just uh, sit on top of the hill, and he's going to come at me with a really big force, a surprisingly strong attack particularly on these two victory locations on the left, which is what he should do, because those are the victory locations. And, yeah, I'm going to to hold. Now, I'm on high ground, and there's water to the front, so I'm looking forward to catching him there. And I had completely forgotten about his oversized cav unit, which he always gets in this battle, which is a real pain in the neck. So, and I have to deal with him at some point. So, yeah, we're going to watch him attack.
Okay, I want him to charge into the water um, before I open fire on him. And I'm kind of just looking for him at this point. He ran forward with some skirmishers to find my army and was a little too aggressive, I thought, with them. And they took some a lot of unnecessary losses. But what I'm doing is I'm looking to see where he's going to attack and in how much strength. Okay, I have pretty good visibility of the approaches on the left. This is a little bit dangerous if he has infantry over there, and I suspect he does, but I might be able to kill his uh, skirmisher units. There's one down. If I can get another shot and keep visibility with my long-range artillery, there's a real good chance I take this guy out. And he's gone. So, yeah. Those guys are a real nuisance because they spot my artillery units, so his artillery units can hit my artillery so yeah that's uh getting rid of his skirmisher units it really diminishes what he can see and what he can fire at that is one undersized infantry unit he is not going to make it across that open ground At this point, I suspect he's moving units from his left to right, um, north to south, to attack the victory locations. And I'm going to let him do that. That's what he wants to do. I'm going to let him do it. Now, I kind of thought he had reinforcements coming in from this side of the map, too. And now I see them. I have visibility of him. I know where he is, and that's great. And this looks really tempting. I can't believe he has a supply wagon just sitting here um, without any infantry to back it up. That, that would just be too lucky. But I'm going to risk sending in a cav. And now I see another supply wagon. So one supply wagon captured, I now see another supply wagon, that's a total of three over there. So I've sent one cav back to give um, visibility on my flank, because the enemy always wants to sneak something around the flank of your army. There's a victory location to the rear. And I just want to keep eyes on that he's not trying to sneak somebody around. So, okay. Um, my two melee cav units can go forward. In fact, I'm going to have everybody go forward. And maybe snag these supply wagons. There's one. 
My idea is just to snag them and get the heck out of there. So I'm going to put someone on that uh, observation point and see where his army is, because uh, a little confused where he is right now and what he might be doing. I expected him to attack a lot harder. He still has a sizable army, and yeah, I'm not going to be fooled by the fact that I don't see it. It, He has a pretty big army, it just has not attacked yet. Okay, found him. There's my cav unit, found him. So hopefully he has uh, two infantry, will attack toward the victory location, my calf will be to his rear, that's what I'm thinking. But for some reason he's more interested in my calf unit, so... Yeah, my thought when I built the cav was that eventually they'd go around the enemy's right flank and get into the enemy rear and do all kinds of damage, particularly to his artillery. So I'm going to send them over to get them in position, because I think these guys can hold this. Yeah, he's going to run into the water and I'm going to hit him from behind. So we're going to take away his uh, enthusiasm pretty quickly, I think. Nope, he got a shot off on my cab and now he has two units. And even though he's fairly fast, my cab should be faster. That's, that was pretty close. Okay, now he, he gets all reset all his uh, aggressiveness and charge bonus. So that's not good. So I want to put a shot on him because he's in the water. And that guy over there got morale shocked. And now he has units uh, attacking my left. So these guys are just about in position. Okay, get my cab out of there. Unfortunately, he did morale shock, so that's unfortunate. So I'm going to dismount them and have them put some more shots on him because he's in the water, should be able to tear him up. One of his units uh, shattered, trying to advance toward the hill. There is no victory condition uh, in those forward locations anymore, it's to the rear.
So and he always sends units around to the rear trying to snag that victory location. But I, I'm thinking if all he has is those two infantry units, the little tiny force I have there can just tear him apart. So, yeah, I'm not too worried about it. And then he shows up with a big cav unit out of nowhere. So, okay, that could be a problem. So I want to mount that guy up and get him out. And the other two light units get out of there. The last thing I want is for his cav unit to catch me. Um, yeah, that's, that's very bad. Because his cav unit could kill my sniper, my skirmisher. He could kill my cav unit. Yeah, that's... Yeah, everything just changed. And what that guy usually does is go around behind your army and snag the flag. So that could be annoying too. Because then a countdown timer goes and you can lose the battle. So what I decide is abandon what I was doing up in the north with my cav, bring them down south, and let's secure this um, before it gets out of hand. Yeah, his unit is way too large. I don't I really don't want to be fiddling with this guy. Yeah, he came out of nowhere. And on this hilltop position that I built, uh, he's getting ready to attack. So what I decided to do is I'm going to fall back, wait till my cav uh, reinforces me from the north. It's going to take him a while to get here and then counterattack with everything and then if i have to shift troops toward where the enemy is uh, the enemy has decided to launch an attack at this point so this is the attack that has to be defeated yeah this is a very nice attack he has a rather sizable force that is um charging that hill so this is not going to be easy. So get all my units back. He's already gotten someone in the melee, but I have plenty of units in backing up. Uh, some canister fire. Detached skirmishers holding the enemy in place. Some of his units are very fragile. If I can uh, shatter them and fall in on his uh, stronger units, get them to rout, this is all going to be good. My cav is uh, taking a while to get back south. I just don't have coverage on my left flank. Yeah, I'm going to let him get into some um, melee with my guys, because I just have so much, I have such supporting fire, and his units are pretty fragile. And that looks to me to be a lot of melee experience. My guys can uh, pile up. Usually melee is one-to-one, uh, -one, uh, which is not good. But on the plus side, you do get, you know, you do get melee experience. So yeah, everybody in the water should get shot at because they're going to take extra damage. And also I have the high ground, so I get a buff to damage, and he gets to take extra damage, so... Yeah, that's pretty bad. Yep, and all those units that uh, charged my position in the woods, they're all getting just pounded to death. And shattered. Have that guy fire and then fall back. 
and all the enemy does is get close, get you know, next to my artillery, so I get canister shots. My infantry and skirmishers can hit him from every side, and he just gets torn up. So anytime a unit attacks alone, it should just get just absolutely massacred. So I finally have guys to the rear holding that flag. His cav won't be able to take that. One of my um, units got too close to his unit that was hidden and um, in a wheat field and took a volley and it routed. So that, that was interesting. That lets me know that somebody was there. So he should have two infantry and a cav unit uh, fiddling around in the, the rear. There's his, his cav. It's pretty good size. And it's, it has two stars. So what I don't want him to do is charge either my skirmishers or my... Um, which would be my snipers or my cav unit. He would do way too much damage. Fortunately, four units firing on his one cav unit is keeping him busy. Now I've got to find those two units uh, that are behind my lines. And uh, once we kill everybody back there, then we can uh, do what I really want with the cav, which is send them forward. So, okay, that's three captured supply wagons. Okay, his unit is in the water, so everybody needs to attack and take shots on him. And I have four cav units that need to charge him and get him in melee. So yeah, his cav is actually trying to get around my unit and take a try to sneak in on that flag. Uh, that's what he does. Yeah, unfortunately he retreats back into the woods where my cav does uh, not quite as well. But if he retreats out of those woods, he's going to die. But I see he has another infantry unit who's going to get a shot off on my troops. Uh, if that unit retreats in the wrong direction, unfortunately he retreats in a good direction. Gives me a little more time to kill that infantry unit. And now everybody can just charge into this um, infantry unit. I can bring other infantry behind him. So yeah, my melee units hopefully will grind some uh, XP. And his infantry that keeps attacking into that uh, water is just getting wiped out. So that's just free kills. And the red line is getting very tiny. So he's lost a whole bunch of guys in these attacks. We're going to wipe out this infantry in the south, and then we're going to go look for his, uh, his cab.
Okay, he has very little left. We're getting toward the end of the day, so time for my guys to advance. My long-range artillery, I see two of his artillery batteries. One of them just died. I want to make sure that my artillery is targeting his artillery. My long-range artillery is targeting his artillery. And, yeah, that's great. My cav needs to cross the river, get on that observation point, find his cav. Those slow-moving infantry and skirmishers need to just stand on the victory location so he doesn't uh, get a chance to try anything clever. Unfortunately, my cav is not going to get to uh, attack to the north. It's going to be tied up looking for his cav unit. And yep, he hasn't given up. He wants to sneak in and try to take that flag. That's what he does. So he, his cav must have a code, built-in hard code, to um, try to sneak in and take the victory location and steal victory from you. Because if he can take that, you don't notice it. Uh, it's like 20 in-game minute, minutes and you lose the battle. So yeah, right now I could lose the battle. Easy. He would take that 20 in-game minutes um, later, game over. So... Okay, I go ahead and fast forward. My cab is on the right side. I had to chase him all the way across the map. He finally died way over there. It took forever. I attack with my infantry. Um, and I'm attacking, and there's nothing left of his army. A um, couple of um, artillery units. Yeah, I don't think there's anything left. In fact, I'm pretty sure there's nothing left. I think that I'm sure the battle ends when I kill this last artillery unit. Right at the last second, I find a supply wagon, but I don't get it because he dies. So, okay, there you go. Um, yeah, um, less, well, yeah, it's over 19 to 1, but I added some infantry. It's still good. It's not, it's short of 20 to 1, but it's, um, yeah, it's a good battle, and I'll go ahead and take that. That's great. I like how, uh, looking at the numbers, he had uh, 27,000, 28,000, 30, 32, 32,000. Yeah, that's pretty good. I had about, what I have, 20, about 20,000 to 32. So, yeah, that's, yeah, that's good. That's, I'll take that. He, he got lots of reinforcements. That's uh, they don't show up on the uh, on the opening screen. So fifteen hundred for the twenty the twenty pound parrots had a great day, followed by the JF Browns. Whoever doesn't think that uh, parrots and JF Browns are good, there you go. The Whitworth killed six hundred, mostly enemy artillery. That's got to be like two units. Um, yeah, the, the the kills were all spread out, which is kind of what I wanted. Um, yeah. Bobby Woods got his second star. Good for him. So the enemy had 42s, crappy 12-pound howitzers, crappy Napoleons, um, some Mississippis, Palmettos. Yep, pretty much terrible, but hey, you can sell it for money, so that's all good. So, almost $700,000, and here's the big thing, 7,500 1855s. Happy day. Uh, a bunch of my units got... Um, got their next perk. Always save before you do anything because you'll change your mind or find out something new on Reddit that you didn't know, like the perks don't do what you think they do. So now we're going into Antietam. Two easy battles and uh, we're going to go into Antietam. And uh, Antietam is just nothing but fun. Crampton's Gap. Yeah, Crampton's Gap can be a little tricky, but we're going to take our time and tear the enemy apart. And South Mountain, we're going to tear them apart too. That can be tricky too. Um, but I think I figured out how to fight it without uh, taking a whole bunch of losses. And that's what you want to do, um, because South Mountain can be can be bloody if, you, if it gets out of control. So, yeah, we're going to do that. And then Antietam. Antietam is, uh, to me, the really fun battle. And a lot of times I'll just play to Antietam and stop. I mean, I'll just play Antietam and then I'm done with the campaign. Because to me, that's really the fun battle. And then after Antietam, you get into the mid-campaign. 
and yeah, we're going to have tons of weapons, and um, yeah, so push up medicine. Normally, I would take medicine and training up at the same rate because I'm making a video. It's just easier to keep track of what I'm doing if I just take medicine to 10. So, yeah, everybody's going to get marksman training. Again, that perk doesn't do what it says it does, but that's okay. It does give me cover. Supply wagon apparently doesn't always work in every battle, but we're going to have plenty of stamina and morale. I'm going to take my the rest of my sharps into... Um, Sharpshooter. Uh, I don't think that perk does what it says it does, so I have to do some research on that, find out what it really does. Um, yeah. Yeah, that this army I'm really happy with, and I'm really happy with the officer corps, happy with the number of weapons I have. My troops have all, right now, Harper's Ferries and 1855s. I must have $500,000 worth of 1855s. I'm um, going to buy more Harper's Ferries. 1861s will be coming online fairly soon. And we're going to transition to 61s. Keep buying. Um, yeah, there's the 7,500 guns. That's just terrific. going to buy the good officers. Um, yeah, 10,000 Harper's Ferries in inventory and almost 20,000 1855s. Yeah, it's terrific. going to sell a whole bunch of these things that I'm never, ever going to use. Going to keep the farmers for ballast units. And, um, yeah, these other things can go. So now I'm at about 750000 It just keeps going up. And I don't have that much to build. I mean, 12-pound howitzers. Yeah, I'm going to buy all these, of course. Looking forward to that. Some more 6-pound rifle. Yeah, I'm going to buy all those. Now, I only spend the money right before the next grand battle normally. Um, but man, I have a pile of cash. I could just go ahead and buy that stuff, and it wouldn't affect anything. These units, I don't know what number I'm going to take these up to. Um, going into a side battle, I only build up the... Man, if I move officers around, some of these guys are going to get their next star. Anybody that's close, if you give a higher officer, you can get the next star. So I might do that. Um, this guy has a greater efficiency, efficiency line than command line, so I could give him raw recruits and it wouldn't hurt him that much. But yeah, he's doing great. And the army looks great, and it's been fun. I hope you enjoyed the battle, and I'll see you in the next battle.